Today I've got a whole bunch of tips for fruit photography. This is a really great subject to try out at home, so grab some fruit and let's get started. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and today I've got a really juicy subject for you in fruit. I've got a whole bowl full of different types of really interesting fruits, uh, most of which are pretty common and easy to find. So you guys can go and grab the same fruit as me or anything similar and try it at home along with me. So go and grab your fruit. I'm going to set up my camera. Today I'm shooting on my trusty glass topped coffee table. This is going to be the uh, the perfect situation for our fruit to sit in because we have this glass which we can shine light through. And that's going to be the main focus of today's shoot is shining light through all of these different fruits and seeing what we can actually do by manipulating that light and manipulating our camera settings. So I've got my camera pointed straight down at my glass top uh, and then I can place my fruit right on here and some lighting around it. It's really important to get your camera pointing face down, straight down, uh, so that your um, lens, uh, the front of your lens, is parallel with your surface. If it's not quite parallel, you're going to get um, some of your shot in focus and some of it not. So if it's tilted off in this direction, uh, this bit might be in focus, but this bit uh, might not be. So try and get your camera pointed uh, straight down, and then we can talk about how to slice off fruit to complement that. As many of you that watch the channel uh, will know, I don't have a green thumb, I'm not very good at gardening. Um, I'm equally useless at uh, cooking, so don't judge my slicing skills. I'm going to start off uh, with a kiwi, which is going to be a pretty uh, good starting point. It's a pretty common uh, fruit that you see macro photographers uh, shooting. Now, my objective here is to get a slice that is perfectly straight. I don't want one side of it to be thicker than the other. Uh, this is very much easier said than done. Uh, I've tried a couple of times now and it's already uh, getting thicker at the bottom or thinner at the bottom. Um, you need to try and keep your knife as straight as possible so that you can get a nice flat piece of fruit. This is going to uh, work with our camera pointing straight down to make the surface of our fruit completely flat. That means we can get it all in focus pretty easily. Before you take your fruit off your chopping board and put it onto your glass, make sure to have some kitchen roll uh, or other tidying, cleaning materials uh, close by so that you can mop up the, uh, the fruit juice that these things are going to leave everywhere. If you leave it too late, it will dry out, it will get pretty sticky, it will get harder to clean, and all of those little drops, marks, and smudges are going to be very, very apparent on our glass uh, when we're looking through our camera, especially when we get our lighting out, which is what I'm going to do for our slice of kiwi. I've got my lonely little slice of kiwi down on my table and it looks all right. Uh, it's just using the ambient light in the room right now. Um, it's not the kind of shot that I'm going for today. I want to get a little bit more color, a little bit more light, and most importantly, I want that light to be shining through uh, my slice of kiwi to bring out all of the detail inside. The way that I'm going to achieve that is of course by using the Adapt Look Studio. Now I've got the studio sat here on my miniature tripod, which is a really great way for uh, getting the versatility that we're going to need uh, for today's shoot. I can quite happily place it up on my table here, uh, change the height of the control pod, and then add a lot of lighting arms to go uh, both above and below the glass. I'm going to start off by simply adding a single white lighting arm uh, to my control pod and placing it underneath the, uh, underneath the glass shining up through the kiwi. You can see that shining the light up through the table surface and up through the kiwi uh, without any diffusion at all is creating a really nice effect. It's making those greens of the fruit pop a lot more. You can see the differences in the density of the, uh, the meat of the fruit. 
and it's silhouetting the seeds so that's creating a really nice balance of dark spots with nice bright areas and of course that lovely green colour of the kiwi as well. Uh, I'm going to uh, try a couple of different slices and I'm going to move them around in my frame to see if I can't get some interesting shots of my kiwi slice. Now, macro photography is, of course, all about getting as close as possible to your subject, but uh, there is something to be said for moving a little bit further away and maybe catching the edges of your subject and experimenting with that, uh, getting some light into uh, the, uh, the peels and the skin of your fruits can make some really nice effects, especially if they have an interesting texture. I've also been shooting past my fruit slice down onto uh, these subject cards which make for a really nice coloured background. It might need a little bit of extra light from a second lighting arm, but it's worth experimenting with not just shooting the fruit itself. Speaking of adding colour to your shots, I've also been making use of our colour filters. These things are really handy to uh, just add a little bit of extra pop to your shots. So using a green colour filter on my Kiwi was really effective for just making the greens stand out a little bit more. They're really easy to use just by snapping onto the end of a lighting arm and then instantly you have a nice soft wash of green light or say an orange light. And speaking of orange, let's have a look at another fruit. Putting my slice of orange in place over my lighting arm with an orange colour filter, you'll see that we're a little bit underexposed. And this is the price that you'll pay for using a colour filter or even a diffuser. Uh, they will take a little bit of intensity out of your lighting arm. And the way that I'm going to counteract that today is by using the boost mode feature on the control pod. By holding the plus button on our control pod until boost mode is activated, you can see that we've actually increased the light output of our single lighting arm quite dramatically and our shot is now quite nicely exposed. This is particularly useful for subjects like this where you're trying to shine that light through uh, quite thick slices of organic material, similar to how we shot our leaves uh, in a previous video. Uh, it does need quite a lot of light. You lose a lot of light not only uh, by using the colour filter, uh, but also by shining it through your subject. Papaya, passion fruit and pomegranate. Three peas, three fruits that certainly taste a lot better than they look under macro. Uh, they're not particularly appetising when you get up close, but they do provide an interesting opportunity for me to show you a different method of lighting for a more opaque fruit. My passion fruit here is pretty opaque with the exception of the seeds where the light shines through. I just wanted to add a little bit of extra light onto the top surface, which means having to bring a lighting arm both over the top and underneath my coffee table. I've brought my Adaptlook Studio up onto the top of the coffee table so that I can stretch a lighting arm easily underneath, but also keep one on top. And that's going to uh, light both the top surface of my fruit and the underneath so that we get that same effect of the light shining through. I'm going to jump back to some more citrusy fruits, which seem to work a little bit better for this type of photography. I think I found my favourite fruit. Uh, this is the pink grapefruit and it's really quite large, which means we can get very, very close to the detail and there is a lot of detail. The way that these citrus fruits in particular um, build themselves up, it creates these little pockets of uh, juice. And if you slice it quite carefully and quite cleanly, uh, not like me with my very blunt knife, uh, you can keep some of those pockets intact and then shine light through them, creating uh, lots of shadows of the structure of the fruit inside. Uh, I definitely recommend starting out with something like a grapefruit, the pink one I prefer just because of the colour, but a normal grapefruit would do just fine. Uh, lemons, limes, things like that all have these really interesting uh, structures inside them. I think I am pretty much done creating absolute uh, fruit-based carnage for today. Uh, don't worry, most of these fruits are going to end up in a sangria, I think, uh, because it's a pretty hot day 
and I'm pretty thirsty now after all of this photography. I have really enjoyed shooting this stuff though. It's really, really interesting shining light up through organic material like this. I've talked about it before uh, when we were shooting leaves and also flowers, but fruits are an entirely different beast. Trying to slice them thin enough uh, so that the light can shine through them, um, but accurately enough so that they're nice and flat on their top surface, it's a bit of a challenge. I'm pretty happy with most of the shots that I got and most of the fruits that I tried out, so I do recommend just grabbing a lot of fruits from your uh, local supermarket and giving them a go. Put them under your macro lens, shine some light both underneath them and on the top and see what they come out with. If you've enjoyed seeing all of these different types of fruit under a macro lens, let me know which one was your favourite down in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.